Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you give me like 30 seconds? My fish is in the air fryer. It's about to finish. Yeah, call me back. You know I'm streaming though, right? That's fine. That's okay, fine. call me back. It's just done 30 seconds. You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? I'm good. I've been cooking. About that about sounds great. Meal. How about you? Isn't it like uh, 11 p.m. where you are? No, it's 9.22 now. Okay, it's a reasonable hour. These are yeah. really good hours. Yeah, I do stream nights because that's when all the Americans are awake. And that's where all your fan base is. And nobody's going to watch you at four in the morning. So I think true. No, true, true. How is everything? I know you guys have been like making more content recently. It's been great, by the way. How are you? Everything good? Everything's good. Everything's good, you know? Right now, we're just uh, telling streamers that they're not hard workers and they need to stop moaning. And, you know, it's made a lot of people upset. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I actually, I actually am looking forward to talking to you about it. But I have a question. Can your audio get a little louder for me? Or is it maybe it's my earphones? I feel like you're whispering. I'm going to get, do you want me to oh. get closer? To oh, damn. Mic? Okay. Abba. I'm married. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, let me try this again. Is this good? Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you. Right. You can make me a tad bit louder because I probably don't want to chew right into the mic every oh, time. Oh, yeah, I'll do it on my end. My bad. I can do it on my end. Yeah, as long as this is good. Uh, all right. Let me just pull this stuff out of the pocket. Honestly, when you make something nice, you know what I mean? You make a little fish, make some potatoes, a nice little salad. Mm. Fresh. Yum. Yes, man. Okay. So, food aside. My body's ready right now. So how about we just start from the beginning? Okay. Okay. I'm okay. pretty confident that you'd seen our video and mm -hmm. that you had some disagreements. And I always like it when you and I disagree. Yeah. Because at the end of it, we never come to agree, but it's still enjoyable. Yeah. I agree with that. And I do look at it that way. I'd like to really just disagree or agree to disagree without it being like, Abba's a bad person or like, Brittany's a bad person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But I think I said something along the lines of like... Uh, or, or, or you were talking about rich people's problems and like they're yeah. valid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how about we just start where where you think I'm at and mm -hmm. where you think I'm wrong. Okay. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I try to, uh, you know, tackle problems from like the humanist, most human perspective. So like the feelings a person is having regardless of status and privilege and then regardless of how people perceive them. And I grew up in a world where people would say like people who work at McDonald's don't work hard. And I learned that that was not true. Then I looked at rich people and I was told like they don't work hard. And I was like, well, that can't be true because like how'd they get there? And so I think for me, I always tried to say like everybody works hard. But of course, even more than that, I don't even think Hassan was talking about working hard. He was talking about like a social battery in which I agree after streaming, you know, sometimes I'll have friends hit me up and be like, hey, I want to talk to you about your stream. And I just like ideas with you. And I'm like, oh, my God, I cannot be social with you. And they're like, why not? And I was like, because I just talked for nine hours or seven hours or six hours. Like, I don't want to do it now. And plus, I have a husband. I can go talk to him. But also, it's exhausting. So I kind of related on that front. But then I disagreed with him on the idea that, like, his – that job specifically is that way for everyone. So the only issue I had with your video and even Hassan's was saying that anything could be objective or black and white. Like, this job is objectively harder. This job is, like, always – you know, socially draining or like this job is, I just, that language confuses me. Cause like my brother in sales, he saw your video. He was kind of upset, but on my behalf, which was so sweet, right? He calls me, he goes, I don't know who Abba and Preach are, but I don't like the way they said that. Cause I know how hard you work. And I was like, they didn't say that about me. They're saying it about rich streamers, I think, but I'll ask Abba. Cause like now I'm wondering, are you saying like my job is easy? Because like, I feel like I put 12 hours a day in, seven days a week, <laughs> to a job I hope gets me to retirement, and I have no idea if it's going to do that. Okay. So there's a lot was said there. Yeah. So I'm going to – so I took notes while you were talking. Thank you. Thank you. Took notes and ate. So I'm just going to pat myself on the back. All right. So how about we start with the first statement, which is – well, I think the one that everyone got upset with. Um, so there was actually two statements that everyone got upset with. Um, that I believe he said his job is soul sucking. Mm. Is soul sucking in the way regular jobs are. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the one that everyone he feels like everyone took out of context, but it is what he said. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Now, do you agree with that statement that his job is more soul sucking in ways that regular jobs aren't? No, I think all jobs can be soul sucking to all people. Fair. That's fair. Depending on whether or not you want to be in that job or right. what the job entails, all jobs can be soul-sucking. Okay. Right. 
So people got outraged at that statement, but then everyone was like, look at the greater context. And then he started talking about how his job was more draining from his social battery in the way that other regular jobs aren't. And then I think he excluded sales jobs. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you see an issue with that statement? Um, again, I think Hassan's language, like anyone's, is really poor if you think you're speaking for 8 billion people. So I don't agree with his black and white statement. I believe for him, it is true. Right. Does that make sense? Fair. And for a lot of the people who watch, it wasn't true. And that's why they had issues with it, right? For sure. For sure. And it's not like he was saying, my job is socially draining. He was saying, my job is more socially draining than a lot of regular people's jobs who do things that are not non-service. I agree. And I agree. A lot of people saw that and they're like, you think my job is not socially draining? You think I want to go out and have a social life afterwards? So I agree. they got rightfully upset. I agree. Which is, I think, where 99% of his criticism came from, right? His first two statements, which wasn't him being taken out of context. It was just him putting his foot in his mouth. Yeah. Which, you know, you can be forgiving of if you see someone's streams from now on or days, like maybe they are. But I feel like Hassan just has a habit of putting his foot in his mouth and then crying about context afterwards. <laughs> I, I don't agree. think he's being taken out of context. I just think he just doesn't, either A, doesn't do a good job of expressing himself, or B, um, just says dumb stuff and then afterwards cries about it. Okay. When people get upset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't want to okay. interrupt you, so tell me when I can talk. No, you can go ahead right now. You just okay. Go ahead at any point. So you, I agree with you. So like, this is the problem is like, I do agree with you. Now, you know how he said that, like he was making like those statements when you guys say streaming is easy. Streamers don't complain. Are you talking about average streamers? Like people making 30K to 100,000K? Are you talking about people in the 0.1%? No, we're obviously we're talking about rich streamers because the people okay. who have the time flexibility to choose their hours are people who have money. That's okay. why I think with Asman Gold, even we talked about how the fact that he makes money. And you make so much so you can afford to take this time off. Obviously, for people who are on the lower end, it's going to be a different experience because you don't have the same financial flexibility. Okay. Okay. Then in that case, we fully agree because that was what I thought was maybe happening in the conversation because I even like my brother was so cute getting defensive of me. I was like, no, I know Ab is a really good person and he's not talking about people struggling. He's talking about people who are super able to take time off, like who would literally not even notice if they were financially like impaired by taking time off in a real way. He can't, he's not talking about me. And he was like, okay, well, if you know them and you say that, then I believe you. And I was like, yeah, because I think that like he's in sales and he thinks my job is harder, but I think his job is harder because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and i think that's how it is for most people i don't think any of us do jobs that we we pick the path that's easiest for us or we think is the easiest for us it might not be right, but right. you know I, I think this leads to like your jobs are objectively harder statement like you don't like that too right yeah i don't i'm very uncomfortable with it yeah okay before we get to that this is the first two w what issues did you have with us because i feel like our first video was mostly about him saying that stuff and us disagreeing on the whole social battery yeah thing of streaming is worse than other jobs you know probably if i think about it more i was probably just like annoyed with the way that it was like talked about more than like what you were saying because i can't not agree with you i think you're explaining a real lived experience i will say this one thing though it did feel this could be very wrong but it did feel slightly virtue signaling to your audience like you didn't want to offend people who maybe were struggling, but I couldn't tell. I think you were probably just trying to relate to them. But also, I don't know how much money you make, but I'm assuming you're okay. And I'm assuming it also came off weird hearing other people who are okay, maybe talking like they were still relating. But I'm not sure if that's on. That's probably not honest. Well, I think, right? I think we can still relate because me and Preach, again, made most of our money well into our like 30s. Ah, uh, good point. We good didn't point. make money before that. So like I I worked in the military, yeah. worked at banks worked sales for charities yeah uh worked mcdonald's so like good most point, of my point. adult life is this is new this is all two three years oh um, okay can i relate yeah okay that yeah, makes total sense to especially since uh, it, to be fair asman and hassan didn't have never worked like they've never been in the workforce and i took you know people told me to quit youtube a thousand times in my life because it took me literally i've been doing this since out of high school abba i'm 34 i'll be 35 in may and i just started making money and mm -hmm. I'm really proud of myself. And I never quit when people told me to quit. But like, this was my goal. I always wanted to be a radio host growing up. So like, I was like, I'm not quitting now. And now I'm finally doing it full time. I replaced my middle income with like this income. That's a, I always worked a full time job and did YouTube. That was always the financial decision I made because I couldn't just like quit, right? I had to pay rent. So it's not like yeah. I could try to do it without working. So with me too, I'm, I'm four years into taking this career seriously. And I'm finally making enough money to like live on my own and do like live on my own without roommates, right? Mm 
Yeah. So, so to the statement of like, do we think we're trying to? Also, congratulations, you're aging really well. Thank but, you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, the statement like, do I feel like I'm trying to virtue signal? Like, no. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I have no problem telling my audience I think they're wrong if I think they're wrong, even if yeah. it, you know piss them off. I, I don't really care about that too much. But okay. Okay. I think it's just. Yeah. I, I also think having coming into the content creation world, I think like there's like a lot of talk about how hard everyone works. Yeah. Okay, actually, we'll, we'll get to that statement afterwards. Okay, so we I think we agree on the first two things mm-hmm. before we move on past that. Um, okay, rich versus poor streamers. Yeah, I think we kind of talked. I think we, we spent a lot of time talking about the fact that, you know, this is about financial flexibility, the fact that people are working longer hours than they really need to in order to make the money that they're making. Yeah. So for people who are making 200K a month, 250K a month, do I think these people need to stream nine hours? No. And if their job is socially draining, I think one of the benefits of their lifestyle and the work that they do is it gives them all the time flexibility in the world. I reject the idea that if these people take time off or they stream seven hours or six hours, that it's going to hurt them. I've seen plenty of streamers who take months off and they come back and everything is fine and people are very excited. Mm-hmm. I see YouTubers who do the same and there's no problems whatsoever. So this idea that they have to overwork themselves in order to make it, I just don't believe. So I don't think the job is actually socially draining. I think the way that they approach the job is socially draining. And I think any job would be socially draining if you were working 10 hours every day. Mm. Um, And so I think it's just hard to have sympathy for people who have the flexibility to choose their own hours, to be able to have all that control, and then also complain about it when they're just really being greedy, in, in my opinion. Okay, I think that's really, really fair. One example I'll give as like maybe another thought I was having, not exactly a counter argument because they might not be related, but I remember seeing this flagrant episode with Andrew Schultz where he talked about his goal for money and how he hadn't made enough yet. And everyone's like, what do you mean? You have a Netflix special. You have like all this stuff. He's like, yeah, but I got a goal because I have family. I'm going to take care of my family. And that really stood out to me as like, man, if I ever want to make it as a YouTuber where I'm taking care of my family, because like, you know, that's kind of a secret goal I think uh, immigrant kids have is like, I want to be able to take care of my parents if they ever need me or like, you know, whatever. That's kind of like a goal I have for my, even my siblings, like God forbid something happens to them. I would love to take care of them if possible. So I'm like, okay, how much money do I have to make to take care of adults that get dementia or need a nurse at home? And then you start realizing, oh, that's not like, that's not average money. So then I sort of related to him in that regard. And I know Hassan is taking care of his family because rumor has it his dad lost all the money in gambling, right? That's what he says in interviews. I don't know if that's true. So I think about that. Does that play a role at all in terms of like the job and working and, you know, maybe doing more hours or making as much money as he can now before he like falls off? You know what I mean? Mm, I don't really buy that. Okay. I think I, I watch the way these people spend their money. Fair. Uh, I watch like, you know, all the stuff that these guys do. And it's like, what does taking care of your family really mean? Like you, what you want to be able to buy them like a mansion. You want to be able to buy them a second house. Good point. Or you just want to get them health care to the latter years. And then if you want that goal, there's nothing wrong with it. I think you should be able to go for it. But if you're killing yourself to get to that goal and then you're complaining about that mm. to your audience who mm. may not be able to even get their parents like monthly health care and then you're comparing your suffering to theirs or comparing you know, how hard you have to work to them, then it's okay for them to be like, I don't really care that you want to buy your mom a jumbo jet. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. am I supposed to feel sympathy for you because you can't do that? And in my opinion, even knowing Andrew, I know how much money these people make. Mm. They can take care of their families. When they say yeah. take care, they don't mean like by necessities or emergencies. When they say take care, they mean I want to get them anything they want, anytime mm. they want. That's not something that I can okay. care for. Or feel sympathy because you can't meet that goal. Like, I just don't care. Okay. And I, I think it's I think for I everyone else not to care either. I think I agree with that then. I do agree with that. I think I misunderstood what people meant when they said that. Because I was imagining, like, maybe legacy money or, like, taking care of kids or health issues. And, like, you're right. Of course, they wouldn't need that much money to do the average kind of life. So I think, okay, then I think that helps understand that perspective and why. And then um, versus, do you think there's a difference between uh, complaining versus venting? Mm. Do I think there's a difference between complaining versus venting? Uh, That's a good question. Uh, No, I, I don't think. Okay, yes, I would say so. So okay. I, I think from a societal standpoint, when people would see complaining, they would see uh, complaining inherently has a negative connotation, even though it's not yeah. inherently negative. You know, like if you file a complaint 
about your boss. Like that's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be justified based off what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't say you're, you're you're venting about your boss. You know, you'd file a complaint. So complaining, I think there's a difference. If we're just talking about somebody complaining about their problems, yeah, I think people would just see that as negative and that they're complaining about something that's unnecessary or, or maybe a bit trivial. Okay. Whereas venting, it's like you are reaching a breaking point mm. or there's like this need that you've really held in for a long time you're letting out. I think that's how yes. people do it. I agree. Okay. So when you view Hassan, I saw it more as possibly venting, but I don't watch Hassan, so I don't know. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but I'm assuming everyone saw it as complaining. I think I think people saw it as complaining and they belittled it because he compared himself to average people. I, I agree that's with that. Happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's that. what happened. Like I said, I think everyone agrees with this too. If you'd have just said, yo, my job is taking it out of me and I'm really tired. I don't think one tenth, not even one hundredth of the backlash would happen. Yeah. Yeah. I do think like, yeah, everyone I feel like it's so subjective that if he was just sharing a personal, but then he did the comparison and I think like it's fine. So I would tell Hassan if I talked to him, I'd be like, I agree to disagree. (laughs) Okay. That I think that's your opinion, but I would say like all jobs are hard for different kinds of people and anyone can feel that way about any job they're in. Like being a movie star sounds like the worst, like my nightmare. Right. But that's because like, I don't want to be an actor, you know? So it's like this dream people have, or how do you feel about, okay, here's a question I have. Cause I, I do get a little annoyed when I hear this, but I think I know your answer already. Maybe when people say like, I, I would love to be a streamer. I, w- I would take that in a heartbeat. Do they mean, they mean it's a stream, like a streamer who's already successful, right? They don't mean like doing it on their own, starting from scratch. I'm assuming. Oh. The average person, when they hear streamer, they just hear somebody who plays video games and makes millions. Ah, uh, yeah, I wish, huh? <laughs> but but that's what a streamer is to the average person. They don't really know a difference. Like maybe Kai's changing that a little bit, and some of these young guys like sure. speed. But essentially, they just see guys, and, I, and I'm not trying to insult these people. I think that's just a perception people have. They see these guys kind of acting like clowns or buffoons and yelling really loud, and it doesn't seem like there's any talent or skill involved in it. Yeah. In, in being that kind of entertainment, it looks a little bit mindless to most people. I agree Same thing with, with that. video games. It's like. Oh, you make millions doing a hobby that most of us use to decompress. Like, I already mm-hmm. play video games in my free time. I just got to turn on my camera and make money. Like, to them, that's how they view it. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, of course, that's how they view it. Because, yeah, in my head, of course, and I'm I'm really lucky. Like I said, I've, I have siblings, and we all talk about our jobs all the time. And we all look at each other's jobs as, like, harder. But, but at the same time, we all know, like, it's just we chose what's good for us. Like my brothers in construction would never want to be streamers. They're like, man, it takes too long to build an audience. But that I'm sitting here like I can never do construction. Like, you know, and I'm, we're all just sitting here relating. But I think you're right. The average person is watching somebody who feels very like so far from their reality that they're like that, like if I, if that was only my life. But then, you know, I don't think they think of everything that goes into it or the the possibility of even being rich and being a streamer. Like, I don't even know what rich means to people, but like, I certainly doubt I will make millions of dollars in my career, but I will be average. And I think that's really great. Like if I could stay middle class for the rest of my life, I would be very, very happy. But like, that's the thing is like, I think even with my job, people are always like, oh my God, you're like a content creator. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh, slow down. Okay. I am a normal, yeah. like I'm I mean, not. I mean, to be fair, because you're making like close to five figures a month. You're you're rich for sure. Now, Five are figures. you are are you are you rich in a way that like you never have to work again? No, but you are rich. For Wait, sure. five figures. Yeah. How much is five figures? Am I dumb? That's ten thousand minimum. <laughs> you're saying if you make ten thousand, you're rich. A month? Yeah. Oh, a month. Oh, I wish I was making ten thousand a month. Maybe soon. I did last year. Last year I did really really good, but yeah. my average year is about seventy k. That's my average. Yeah, 70K would be upper middle class. That's pretty good. If if you're making five figures a month, you're you're, you're rich for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. Okay, I don't know why y'all say rich because like when I grew up, I'm from Cali. Rich is not 70K, girl. (laughs) I mean, you're upper middle class, so you're doing really well. And not in Cali, like the average, like Cali rent, my, like my siblings are paying $2,000 for a one bedroom apartment in the suburb. Uh, I mean, you're still doing really well. Like, okay, when people say you're doing really well, you're doing that in comparison to other people within your area and their incomes in comparison. So like you think 70K is like not really great. There's people living on 30K and 20K and barely making ends. I mean, so like, I, with 70K, you can cover your rent. You for sure, for sure. I mean, gosh, I remember, I mean, yeah, I made 22K yeah. like most of my, 
like beginning 20s, right? Because like we're grocery. That was like my job. So that's an average salary. That was stressful. That was a stress that I absolutely will tell everybody is not worth it. It is better to make 45K or 50K than it is ever to make 22. But also you're lucky to have 22 because like I remember not making even 22. You know what I mean? It's a it's a hard life. Every time you make a little bit more, you realize like, oh man, like there's still like a different kind of struggle. So I do agree with you in that. Like 70K is really, really good. Right. Like it is you don't live in Cali anymore. So like right now where you are, you'd be considered very rich. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. I am considered very well off here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My my partner's bachelor pad was like 300 USD when I got here. Exactly. So you take your income, you travel with it. Yeah. yeah, You're you're rich in like 99 percent of the world. For sure. And I do agree with that. I don't want to take that for granted. And then, you know, you you know, to maintain it, I obviously do like have like multiple streams of income. And like that's the thing is like I know how hard it took for me to get here. But I also know that I'm really lucky that I was built this way. I do think my personality, like I do feel lucky I was born it with like this personality. And I think that gives me a leg up in this industry because like, yeah, I, I just know like, I don't know if it comes more naturally to me to be on screen, I think. Mm. Like you're, it feels really lucky that I was born. But then maybe that's why I always wanted to be a talk radio host because I was me. You know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, I think it definitely takes a certain disposition. Yeah. Uh, as far as like whether or not this job is hard, uh, okay, define hard. Um, I think we probably disagree here. I mean, you know, I I cry about it sometimes, but I cry about everything because it's just stressful. You're working twelve hour days, like in hopes to make enough money. Like you work for free a lot of the time because like I don't get paid every hour I work, obviously. So you're just kind of hoping you make money or like you bring in viewers or like it works out or maybe AdSense pays you more today if you're lucky. Like I just started making money on AdSense. So I'm definitely like I think there's a hardship to it in the sense that like you don't know if you're making rent next month, but you know you're pretty sure. But you're not sure. Okay, but- I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. This is probably the most controversial part of this whole discussion. Yeah. I don't think streaming is hard. I just think most people are really bad at it. There you go. Said it. Yeah, I think like for it, I guess it just depends. Like you're socially talking, you're thinking. I also do philosophy content, so maybe it's a little different. I don't play games. Like I'm taking on people's burdens. They're crying. Like sometimes I do a lot of emotional labor. Maybe it's that too. Like when I think about my job, like I'm not just playing video games. I don't play video games. I'm like, I, I think, but I felt that way about nannying. I felt that way about working grocery. I feel the same way about streaming that I do about any job I've ever had. Actually, I like it. It's good enough, but obviously, it's a job. It's a job. It's definitely a job. I don't think I'll ever say that. Yeah. I, I, I just, the way I, I see some people run their business, like if we're just talking about streaming yeah. as a business, you run a business. I just think most people are really bad at it. I do and agree with that. Because they're bad at it, they're compensating in every other way possible and they're saying it's hard. It's like, no, it's not hard. You're just not optimizing anything. You're not doing things the right way. And then because you're you're showing up for long hours, but you're making like really low effort stuff. Sure. And you don't have the character the talent or whatever it might be, you're saying it's hard. It's like, no. It's like, one, you're not, it's like, it's like a five foot five person saying basketball's really hard. But it's like, <laughs> is it really difficult? Are you just don't have the stuff equipped for it and you're not optimizing what skill sets you do have? So I know me watching streamers, in my personal opinion, having worked a lot of different jobs and then going to these conventions and watching them work, I don't think what they do is difficult. I just think most of them suck at it and they don't know how to be good at it. But yeah, I don't know if it's difficult. I would say, again, it, it runs into that thing where, I think anyone, well, again, I don't like, you know, when you, did you, do you ever hear anybody say like fast food workers don't work hard or minimum wage workers don't work hard? Did you ever hear that growing up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I hear that. And I really just don't ever understand that perspective because those jobs are so hard to me, but I think it's the same way I feel about streaming. We're like, yeah, it's only, it's only hard in a sense. Cause like you're maintaining a business, but like every job is hard, but also every job is easy to someone else. And the, the labor aspect, like it, I feel like we're talking about so many different things. I couldn't imagine making, I couldn't imagine even living isn't hard. Uh, you could make any living hard. No, sure. like living, like being alive is hard. Sure. So then on top of that, you work. So like, how is it just not automatically hard, but also easier for some people, but harder for others? I think, I think when they're saying hard, they're saying it in relation to other work. So you know, people imagine like welding would be hard yeah. to some people in their head, right? They're thinking of the physical labor. They're thinking about like the toll it takes on your body. And then that's how they're basing it off. And they're just complaining. And they're also looking at like, what kind of skill set do you need? How, sure. how, how much expertise do you need, right? Mm. Um, and I would argue even in the term of YouTube content creation, I think some YouTube content creators are, have much harder time making their kind of content than others. Like, sure. for example, animation. I mm. think animation is probably some of the more difficult stuff out there. 
and they get rewarded for it the least. And it, it takes them so long to produce two minutes of content, whereas someone like me who does reaction stuff, it's like super easy. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think YouTube's hard. I've okay. never thought YouTube was hard. Um, I wonder if... Especially the reaction world, like it is some of the easiest stuff. And that that's, makes me laugh when I see like Hassan or Asmund Gold. Like I'm, I don't think they've maybe said this themselves, mm. but what they do is not hard. Like, I, sure. I, I, I reject that notion because I do that work. It is not difficult. It doesn't take time and effort. Sure. It didn't take me any expertise. It didn't take me some rigorous training program like being a doctor. Uh, it didn't. Um, it didn't take this immense toll on my body like a lot of the other work. Right. And on top of that, I'm so incredibly well compensated. It's like yeah. this is the lowest difficulty I may have ever done for the amount of income I get. Does that make sense? So yeah. for me. I just have a hard time thinking like all work is hard. I'm like, no, I see what other people do, even just within content creation. I'm like, that's way harder. Yeah, I think like that's the key point for me is like you're saying I know this because of the work I do. But then I wonder because like, you know, I'm chronically ill. I'm neurodivergent. You know, I have all this like health issues, but I work regardless. And I think I have an audience that's primarily like neurodivergent and struggles to work. And so I'm telling them like you can do this, but it's not easy because like just getting up to shower is like a very difficult thing. So I think maybe I'm also thinking about that bubble, which is like, what if you are chronically ill? What if you're like dealing with disability? What if you like, I think my audience is primarily in that because that's who I am. Like I'm a person mm -hmm. who's worked her whole life and then her body got an autoimmune disorder or whatever we want to call it, fibromyalgia. And now I'm dealing with like the aftermath of like my body's running at like such a low, but I love to work. Like I love, I'm not com like complaining guys. Like I love, so, you know how much I love to work, <laughs> you know? So, so I'll give you an analogy. Yeah. Do you think taking a walk is hard? Uh, It can be depending on your ability, right? Like I obviously like. Okay. Okay. So the activity itself is not difficult, but you may have circumstances that oh, make it incredibly sure. difficult. Yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. So let's say you had no legs and didn't have a wheelchair. I think taking a walk is going to be. <laughs> Yeah. Very difficult, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what's difficult here is not the actual work. What's difficult are your circumstances. Those are very different. Mm, okay. If we look at it like that, then I definitely could say, okay. So regardless, let's say like uh, underwater welding, regardless of like a like you're able bodied, you're perfectly in good health. That is just harder than like working at a fast food restaurant. You would agree? Yeah. If you took the same person and put in between both. Okay. considering what they'd have to do to be able to start work. I think some things are hard. And look, there's not to denigrate it because just because you have ease of work doesn't mean it's not valuable, it's not important, sure. and it's not worth being respected. I think you just have to be careful when you act like your suffering is somehow much more immense as a result of your work. The people yeah. who work much more difficult jobs are going to look at you yeah. and be like, yeah. oh, excuse me, right? So that, that that's where the issue comes in place. But I, I definitely think some jobs are harder than others. For, for sure. sure. And I think for some sure. forms of content are way harder than others. Yeah. Um, okay, I agree I, with you then. I, I think it's okay to say that. Like, I, I, I do reaction stuff. I don't think it's hard. Do you think reaction stuff is really hard? Uh, not compared to animation. So you're right. I think context matters. I agree with you. Yeah, or even yeah. like, w w what does Ethan do? Ethan uh, has his like whole podcast production, where it's like, oh, production. That's, that's costumes. Hard. Like, that's why everything. he needs so many people. Yeah, to, that's to true. Like, for me, it's a two-man operation, and it's like preachers just on-screen talent, so he doesn't even do the behind-the-scenes stuff. So, like, it's not that deep, right? I, I so, agree with you. I agree with you in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think some jobs are hard, and I think it's okay to say that. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree with you in that regard. Obviously, like, contextually, I love to play this game of, like, okay, but, like, to, to I want to take all the nuance, like you said, like, okay, context, the job itself, your ability to do the job, like, all of that, I think, plays a role. So I do think, okay, overall, I think we agree more than we disagree after all. Yeah. 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 Obviously, I mean, if that's you got more true. stuff you disagree with on the Hassan stuff or like the Asmund Gold stuff, I'm more than happy to discuss that. I might have said some spicy things in there. I think we all said some spicy things. You know, <laughs> people in the comments were like, uh oh, Abba's going to burn the bridge. I was like, Abba's not going to burn the bridge. <laughs> like, we're fine. I think, I think it's hard for me to burn bridges. Yeah, I have to do something pretty wild. Yeah. Like, oh, no, yeah, I, I think know. I think we agree. I just want everyone to be considered for the nuance of their contextual situation. But in order to do that, we would have to know so much. And I'd want to, like, I just try my hardest to give my audience an opportunity to think, like, maybe there's a reason they got here. But yes. If we're having like a actual conversation, obviously some jobs are harder than others. Obviously some people are built for things other than other people. Obviously, obviously, obviously I have to agree with that. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I, I think it's okay to say that. And I think with the whole Hassan thing, like, was it blown out of proportion? Probably, but I think he also fed into it by arguing with everybody. And then everyone yeah. else chimed in. So I think it became bigger. It but did. I think it's like the end of the world. Obviously not. But nah. do I think it was a dumb thing to say? I'd have to, I'd have to say so. And I think also the main thing for me is, I don't know, I made this analogy and everyone said it was dog shit, but in my head it kind of made sense. This is if you're doing really well at your job, like financially, career-wise, everything's great, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and you're taking care of financially and your life is good. I think it's hard to have an audience of people who are not secure financially and then basically yeah. cry about your suffering to them about your job and how difficult it is. And then almost say, like, your job is more difficult than them considering they get paid peanuts. I think it's going to be a hard sell for the regular person to look at you with so much wealth. It's like... It's like someone's like, oh my God, getting to work is so hard. It's really difficult for me. It's like draining. And the guy's in a jumbo jet. It's just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, is it true that we invalidate the. Okay, actually, this is one point you said that I do think I, I, I probably disagree with. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you think something about the suffering of rich people is, is valid. As a human. Like a human suffering is in universal. I don't think money keeps you from suffering over the death of your parent or the death of a child or the stress of a job. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. It doesn't keep you from having those sufferings. Yeah. Um, but when you're an incredibly wealthy person. Yeah. Okay. And you're complaining about your circumstances. Okay. Uh, so like your work circumstances or whatever it is to the average rich person who has so little. In comparison to them, mm. I think it's okay for them to be like, I don't really care about your problems considering how well off you are. Now, for look, sure. if a rich person loses their kid, I don't think people are going to be like, oh, rich people losing their kid. Well, you know, they got pillows made of gold they can cry into. No. <laughs> but I think, I, I think people's circumstances definitely factor into whether or not people have sympathy for some of their problems. I agree no. with you. I think I'm trying to encourage people to not do that. Uh, sort of, sort of, sort of. Hold on, wait, sort of. Because yeah, like, okay, um, I think if Hassan had not, and he, sh I think he's wrong on this, compared his job to the average job, which was a mistake because I think he wasn't being honest. Like every job can be soul sucking. That's so obvious, right? If he didn't have that perspective and he just said, oh my God, I'm like venting today, I think it would have been nice for his audience to feel like, okay, Hassan's just like us, like in some capacity because we're just humans. Like it is stressful having a kid or it is like, okay, like parents who have children, I don't want to hear you complain. But if you need a vent, girl, I'll get you a tissue box. I'll comfort you. It is hard to have a baby whether you chose it or not. But also, I don't want to hear you complaining about having a baby. That's kind of what it looks like with Hassan where like I don't want to hear you complaining about being a streamer. But if you need to vent because you're breaking down today, like I understand that, right? Yes, yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I, I think this, if you want to complain about the fact that your child is going through a tough time, I think that's fine. Yeah. You know, but if your audience is full of people who lost their kids or something, you mm, know, mm. and you're over here like, uh, you know, my kid has gastro and it's worse oh. than, you know, the people be like, hey, excuse me, I don't even have a child anymore. <laughs> so I, you, I, I think that's where the whole idea, but I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I think it is. I, I think most people feel like it is easier to just not give a shit about rich people's problems. For sure. I mean, do you remember? Yeah, my audience is in the comments saying the submarine. Remember when the submarine blew up? There were a lot of memes. There were a lot of memes. You know, there yeah. Were when, a lot of memes. when rich people do rich people things, sometimes it is very hard to, but I think, you know, that's how other people feel about even like, People in poverty or people in the middle class or people like people always say like, oh, Brittany, you're an immigrant family, but your dad had a business. So like you're privileged. It's like hard to hear when you see the struggle of your parents. But I understand yeah. what they're saying. They're saying I didn't I didn't grow up in poverty, which is so true. I didn't. I grew up very middle class. I'm very lucky. And so I'm I thinking think about it, too. Now, would mm -hmm. I have sympathy? Like, let's say like some super rich person like spends, you know, 30 million on flying a rocket into the sky with himself in it and mm. he died. You know, and it blew up in the sky. You know, he just wanted to see space, so he he, he spent his ex like crazy amount of wealth, and he died in a spaceship. You know, would I care as much as like some dude across the street from me dying while he was crossing the street? Yeah, going to his like probably not. I probably won't care so much about the rich person dying. And maybe that's not a good thing. I, well, I just, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't even think it's bad, to be honest with you, in my head when I think about it. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. You gave an example of a guy choosing to die and one guy accidentally dying because he got hit and run over. Like, that no, makes me feel better. To, to be clear, he's not choosing to die. His, his, his spaceship flew up. Oh, but it had, um, then it was an accident? Approach. Much like the sun. Mm. You know? I think I'd feel bad for both, but more probably for the guy who was just, like, crossing the street because, like, who thinks they're going to die crossing the street? Right. Right. Yeah. Is that the only reason, though? Yeah, because like the guy in the rocket, well, he has a higher probability like skydiving. I've been skydiving a few times. I always tell my mom, if I die, don't worry. I died doing something I love. But like it's expected. Like we kind of prepare okay. for it. So l let me rephrase the example then. Okay. What if this super rich guy buys the most exotic form of beef? Okay. Super rare, costs 30 million. Mm. It's made from a cow that was farmed in space. It's really <laughs> different. Okay. Okay. He eats the cow or a piece of the cow, and he dies instantly, all right? Mm. 30 million wasted. And then there's the same guy crossing the sidewalk. Do you still feel like you feel bad, worse for the guy who crossed the street? No, I think now I feel bad for both. Really? Yeah, because they both Equally? died just living life. <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad for people, Abba. Like, that's the whole premise of my work is that I now feel bad for everybody and think everyone's on a journey. And, like, I think everyone's living a life just as valuable as mine. But then through my own values, I judge the fuck out of people. But, like, also, who am I to judge anyone? Because, like, we're all just judging each other. You know, I feel bad. A part of my heart dies. Okay. Okay. Fair. I do. Uh, I, you know? Yeah. I just feel like people are living a life and sometimes I look at people and I'm like, man, what a decision, bro. But okay, like you do you. Like, oh man, like I do, I do. But that's all, my mom says I've been like that since I was a kid. So to be fair, I think it's, again, I was born this way. Or I just I wonder, kind of feel do you bad. Your audience, do you think your audience would agree with you? They'd feel as bad for both? I don't know, guys. Do you guys want to answer that question? Would you feel bad for, you know, more than one more than the other? You guys can answer in chat. I'm so curious. Yeah, yeah. It takes a few I feel seconds. Like most for people would be on up. my side, maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily in the audience, but just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I just think for me, I'd be like, "Oh, the guy spent like thirty million on a piece of cow, and he died eating it." Like, I, I just, I don't know why. For yeah. Me, head, I'm like, oh. You know what I think it is? It's just I can relate much more to the person crossing the street than the guy who spent thirty million. So I think everyone just generally will relate to deaths that they're much more. Uh, um, relatable. So, for example, yeah. if someone dies in your neighborhood or dies like in your country, you're probably going to have a stronger emotional response than someone who dies in a very far away foreign country. For sure. Yeah, because you're going to see yourself right. in them, right? Yeah. Um. So the audience so far is saying like, why would the money part matter? Or yes, I'd feel bad for both. But someone pointed out, and this is really important, is like neurodivergency in people, um, having like heightened sense of sensitivity or like empathy is actually a part of this sort of symptom of it. So I wonder if that plays a role where like I hyper identify with like everybody I meet in some way where I'm like, oh my God, we're like the same here. And when I don't relate to people, it's very strange for me because I'm like, uh oh, I can't find a connection. So I wonder if yeah. it's that. If that plays I think a, a lot role. Of people responding though, a lot of people are saying it's difficult for me to relate to rich people and stuff. I think yeah, that's fair too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some people, yeah, some people said the regular guys actually they feel worse for him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's just a relatability thing. I think it's just hard for people to understand the ultra wealthy because they live in their ivory towers. Yeah, I mean, and... I, gosh, I only understand them through the lens of thinking that they're middle class but with more money. Because like, I don't know. I'm not around rich people, right? I don't know. Whether people care or like you, I think relatability matters a lot to people. True. Um, and True. Sometimes it's subconscious. It could just it's like some people will like relate more to people with the same skin tone. Some people relate yeah. more to people who are the same gender. Like I look at women and how they see other yeah. women and they're just like you know, they could be fire hyper protective sometimes. I agree with uh, you. I think people don't factor in how much relatability matters. And the truth is people just don't care about rich people and their problems. I, I yeah. think that's it's ultimately the truth. It's why they want to constantly try to tax them more. And I think that's why they don't care if they lose their money. And I also think that's why rich people often don't care whether or not poor people are suffering mm. or what they're going through while they're in the ivory towers. I think relatability is a big thing. You and, know what? That's a great you know. fucking point, though. Like, that's I'm, I don't want a One Piece spoil for anyone, but like One Piece has a great arc about this. But like, yeah, there is. I think that's so key. Okay, you just said something so kind of profound, though. Like, 
we don't care because we're not relating. Do you think society has any obligation or the individual has any obligation to maybe popping that bubble and considering like what would it be like to have empathy for a person so different from me or no? Do you think it's okay that we all like stick to our little bubbles? Mm -hmm. Are you asking me or the audience? You. Um, do I think that people just generally stick to their bubbles? Like, do you think we should try to empathize with the rich or the rich should try to empathize with the poor? No, it's better that we all kind of mind our business. I don't know. I, do I think we should? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good idea to try to encourage everyone to empathize with everybody. So I think it's not a bad notion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you should probably encourage. I just don't think it's feasible. Okay, I agree with you. I, I, I do agree that. The, okay, but this is because I heard you the other day on one of your videos say bubbles. And I was like, oh, because like that's my like favorite word, obviously. I think we all live in bubbles and we all only relate the best to the people in our bubbles. And then sometimes we're able to relate to other people outside of them if we like we're well, like you're really well traveled. So I'm assuming you have a lot of understanding of different cultures and you relate to people probably more than the average person. Would you agree with that? Mm. Yeah, I think I just see myself in a lot of them. So yeah, okay. I, like even though my financial bracket has completely changed, I still don't really identify with the rich people. I'm getting like little experiences here and there where I'm starting to understand like the rich experience, I, I suppose. But like most of my lived experience is still very ordinary. Like I take public transport. Like I still mm. got my shitty little apartment. You know, like yeah, I don't really have a lot of rich friends per se. So like my social life hasn't been engulfed by that. Yeah. Um. So like even when I travel, I think I just understand. Well, I don't understand, but like. There's certain ways in which certain bubbles intersect. Like, you know, you might would say this. You might say people encompass a lot of different bubbles, right? You got your yeah. dance bubble. I agree. Your streaming bubble. You got your family bubble. You got your farm bubble, whatever it yes, is. Yes, I agree. Uh, and yeah, I think I overlap with people on a lot of different ways that I don't think a lot of rich people would. I totally agree. Actually, the fact that you wear like certain shirts and videos you remind me a lot of graham stefan's bubble where like he's rich but he tries to be a little bit more frugal or like i think that's one of the most attractive things about you as a category is like you always want a man who's humble and a man who's going to care more about his family than like materialism and so like i prefer like i always tell people like go for the abbas because the abbas are going to treat you right and they're going to care about your kids versus like spending money on cars or showing off or gambling your money away and there's something really wholesome or even my husband and I, we've decided like to live off a certain budget way less than like we make. So that way, if we ever do make more, like God bless, like if we ever make like a million dollars, we're not going to, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't make it like in a way, because I don't want to run into um that mistake people make where they make more money and then they, they start like struggling again because they just, you know, lifestyle inflation and they were irresponsible and they weren't grateful. I think it's like a lack of gratitude to like become rich and spend all your money in a way because it's like forgetting where you came from. And mm. I think there's something about that that, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I don't know. Someone's saying like, hey, you should have kids with guys like Ab is always a weird statement, but. Um, what? Have yeah, kids with who? Guys like Abba. Oh, you know, that category of person. Like, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a weird thing to say about yourself, but it's fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would say, I would say, f I think the difference is like in, in approach to richness. I think some of it is like conscious choice. I think, I mean, some, some of it's just upbringing in that mm. it, even if your financial situation changes, like the way you mentally think is still sometimes stuck. So some people get a lot of money from like, you know, sporting contracts and then they're broke within a few years and True. they don't know how to not spend their money not because they're rich it's because they're just like the way that they were like raised in regards to money yeah which is very different no i agree with that even with my own like financial literacy i see a lot of my parents mistakes that they made like showing up and i'm like oh okay wait how do i get it like how do i change that generationally and i'm better off than my parents were at this age which is like really nice but like yeah. my parents bought their first house at 40 and that's probably when i'll buy my first house which would be very exciting and like i'm excited about that like there's prospects of like you want to learn from your parents mistakes while understanding why they made those mistakes and it's because like they were dealing with the information they had and i'm dealing with the information i have and i don't think a lot of people realize that because they think like oh I'll always be making money. I'll always be rich. I'll always be getting contracts. And I do think that that's a fear. I think um, not that I have, but like is reasonable to have because while well, it just happens to so many people, even in YouTube, 
even in streaming. Oh, I'll always be a top streamer. YouTube won't take down my channel. I won't get demonetized. Like all of that. I think that's one of the greatest things you say consistently, which is like this could all go away tomorrow. Yeah, this is my doomer mindset. Um, you gotta, you gotta, gotta accept it. I'm not in control. So, like, I, as sooner as I realize that and accept it, I can live accordingly. And then, yeah, if it happens, I can just get ready for the worst case scenario. I have yeah. to do that. Or yeah, I just lose it. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, but do it, it. what? Can you speak to that for just a moment? I don't want to keep you too long, but I, I want people in my audience to hear you and understand, like, why do you actually think that way, though? Like, why are you always thinking it could go away to tomorrow? I got to be humble. I'll wear, like, sponsored um, shirts over and over again. You know what I mean? To be honest, the sponsored shirt, I, I wear it just because it's comfortable. Like, yeah. Honestly, the Manscaped shirt, like, I just, yeah. it's, I'm not <laughs> sponsored by them. I haven't been sponsored. I, I refuse to be sponsored by them because, like, I don't like working with them and I actually don't yeah. like their product. I said, no. Oh. But, Mm -hmm. I do like their shirts. <laughs> like they're not a clothing company, so what can I do? So I just, I just don't wear it because I like it. Yeah, it'd be a waste of time too. Um, uh, I think that mindset comes from. <clears throat> I don't know. I think if you've been poor for a long time, yeah. and you know what financial ruins like, and it's like something you're actually definitely afraid of, then you kind of have to live with that reality and be like, all right, I don't want to go there again. I don't want to be there, and um. I was just always around the idea that things can go wrong. And so it's better to be prepared for it. And so that if they do, you could better manage it. So like when I've had bad things happen to me in my life, I was generally like mostly ready for most of them because I expected like bad things to happen at a lot of points. It doesn't mean I can't enjoy myself, mm -hmm. but I make contingency plans. Like I'm not a plan A only person. I like plan mm -hmm. B, plan C. I think it's responsible. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I've always had savings. I think I've always been somebody who wouldn't spend if I didn't have my savings up to date. Um, I think I've always been somebody who's like, all right, well, if this job falls through, I've already applied for three other ones, so it's fine. Like I, I, I never put myself in situations where there was like zero alternative. Yeah. Um, Do you? Just because I, did, I, I, just did, I didn't want to be in that barren wasteland of like mm. complete devastation because I wasn't ready. Yeah. Do you have a plan B now? Uh, for this stuff? Yeah, I mean, first off, there's the money I've saved. I think I've like saved like 98% of my income. So like, Great. I haven't touched it. Oh my God, um, you're killing it. But I think even beyond that, like I, I know I have the skill sets to like run a business of any kind that I want to. I have the capital for it to invest in that. I have like assets put away. So I've already created my plan B through the money I've saved up. But I mean, I'm not opposed to just getting a job again. Like I, I, yeah. I, I didn't hate it. So, so for me, I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think that's what it is. Because we, you know, I want to give my... I always want to make sure people in my audience know because we were just talking about that. Like, do you have a plan B? Do you have a plan B? And like, yeah, like I do try to keep an awareness of like I could get a job. I'm really good here. I built up my resume. I'm really like believing in myself, but I'm also not because I don't believe in myself. You know how people always say like, don't have a plan B. And I'm like, okay, that just feels irresponsible a little bit. <laughs> like yeah. I obviously want to be prepared for the worst case scenario. What if we lose internet? Like what if the, I don't know, the whole world needs a different kind of like, I don't know, what if okay. it shifts? I just so want to be I'm going to tell you just how much of a doomer I am. Like I'm <laughs> one of those like bunkers, like post-apocalyptic people who's like. Stop. I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I I save money and every day I think about like I should buy a bunker. I should <laughs> I should buy a safe with a bunch of food and guns. So the apocalypse comes, like at least my money wasn't saved for nothing. You know, like, I'm I'm accruing all this wealth. Why am I not getting ready for the end of the world? Like, Are you gonna how, literally how, you live know. under the ground? Because I cannot <laughs> I mean, if 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 the bugs come or like something crazy happens, like I just like I, I I will die, and I'll be so upset with myself that I wasn't ready. That's pretty funny, actually. Wait, that's pretty. Fu I did not see you as that kind of a person. I'm always telling my husband, I was like, maybe we should buy rice, maybe we should buy pasta, maybe we should yeah. buy stuff, because like I'm always uh, like, you know, that peer. But I haven't done it, because like I'm not like I couldn't. Have you ever? prepared for it like do you have buckets I think of food i can't muster the energy for it but like mm. i am maybe like a month or two away from like telling my <laughs> you know someone who works for me to just like look up all this shit and then i'll give you the budget and just buy it all for stop. me stop so i can just get it together yeah. that's so funny my brother literally he filled my he came and lived with me for a while he filled my whole house up with like meal prep things like meal buckets yeah. i was like what yeah. are you doing and he's like i'm just preparing i was like what that's facts that's facts but here's the thing if shit hits the fan, you're going to be glad you were one of the first ones because, like, you don't want to be the dude in the grocery store when the True. zombie apocalypse happened oh. and fighting for, like, a bag of groceries. True. And you die right there like an idiot, right? True. Well, that's why every Middle Eastern home is the way to go because you know they got two freezers. 
Yeah. And people say like, oh, that's crazy, but like I'm not I can afford it. It's fine. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not like a it's not like the dumbest thing to buy because if an emergency does happen, I'm ready, you know? You know, I do worry about like uh, we're actually worried about an earthquake here. I think we'll be fine where we are in Croatia. But like I know Italy's going to have it the worst maybe. But I was thinking about like f- supplies of food. Like what if like they just because we're, you know, in Europe, you just I just walk to the grocery store and I get my daily food. Like I don't say we don't have a lot of food in the house because the store is just a walk away. Right. And then I was like, we should keep things in the house because like, what if the store shut down? What if they don't have enough food coming in? What if we like I didn't you know what I mean? You take it for granted sort of like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you remember the pandemic when it happened? Oh. Like at first, people were like killing each other over toilet paper. Ta- toilet paper, bro. And that was like in a week. Not a vibe. Okay? Not a vibe. And that vibe. was not even a full breakdown. True, Imagine, true, true. Like, a full societal breakdown. Like, let's say, God forbid, a natural disaster of mm. great proportions happens and <clears throat> like services are shut down. Most people right. are surviving off aid that was being delivered to them or whatever. But like, let's say that's not even accessible. What are you going to do? Like, you know, society like, is interesting because it functions and it's great. Yeah. But it's also barring like war. Because you've even seen Israel Palestine recently. Oh, yeah. They had the thing where the aid was trying to come in and some people were saying they were swarming and then gunfire happened. Like, some of these people are stuck. You people are often put in these states based off like huge, huge disasters that happen. Yeah. So I don't know, for me personally, I just want to be ready in case these kinds of things happen. And I don't I'm not saying it's logical. I don't think it's the most great thing, but it's just part of my personality. So I can't help but think what if. And then when I think that, I'm like, make a contingency plan just yeah. in case. I yeah. I mean, honestly, okay, okay. So, like, as long as it's not consuming your psyche, as long as it's not making you paranoid in, like, a really bad way, I think being prepared is the responsibility part that we actually aren't always raised with. I think you're really lucky if you're able to be, like, a prepared home. Think about the next day. Think about things shutting down. Because you're right, during COVID, like – People were fighting over toilet paper. And I thought, of course, me thinking humanity would come together. And I'm like, oh, nope, there they go, fighting over toilet paper. And I'm like, amazed. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think it's nice just to be prepared. Well, exactly. It doesn't you know? hurt nobody. It doesn't hurt nobody. You can you can help keep your family safe. Like, well, yeah. how's that a bad thing? You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, no, no. I agree with that. Actually, I love, I can't believe you put away like 98% of your income. I'm so fucking impressed. Yeah. I mean, to be, yeah, I have it in some assets. So it's, like, yeah. it's not. Like just disposable all the sure, time. Sure, sure, sure. You know, but yeah, definitely, definitely gotta gotta save your money. I'm not trying to go broke. It'd uh, be so embarrassing for me <laughs> to like make this money and then lose it all like an idiot. Like I'd, I'd feel super embarrassed. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's interesting. Is that like shame from your like culture or bubble, or is that guilt because of your own values? Like, would you feel bad you betrayed yourself or like people's expectations of you? I, know, I think I just see the stereotype of like people becoming rich and then losing yeah. it all, and I'm like, oh, that's so stupid. Like, how could you do that? I agree. Uh, yeah. And then almost every time you look into it, it's just they're so irresponsible. They they buy dumb things, and mm. I'm like, all right, I should learn. Like, what do they What do they say? They say like, uh. A smart man learns from his mistake, but a wise man learns from others. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How could it not be really dumb to not learn from those examples? Like, yeah. No, I agree with you. Stories to avoid making those mistakes, right? This is yes. how we pass on lessons to future generations. I've heard those stories my whole life, so I'm like, I don't want to be that person. Yeah, my dad would always talk. He likes Mike Tyson, and he would tell me, he's like, look at Mike Tyson. Just think about Mike Tyson. Like, think about how you can have all the money in the world, and you could lose all the money in the world. Just, like, think yeah. about He even tells me, like, if I ever won the lottery, he's like, don't tell anybody. Don't tell me. Don't tell your mom. Don't tell nobody. Nobody knows you have that money. And I was like, okay. Wow. He's, yeah, you know, they're just trying to I prepare why, you. Though. Yeah, because people, people destroy themselves over money. It's insane. Families, like, relationships. Like, it's insane. Yeah, people start asking you weird stuff, and they're like, "I have this business idea, and I think like some investment." Like, yep. oh, you mean my investment? <laughs> everybody got everybody got an idea with your money. It's yeah. crazy. It's exactly exactly. So yeah, I, I don't even invest my idea like a crazy person. Why, why are you trying to invest my money? That's crazy to me. Do you have um like uh, secret dreams of like things you would love to do like secretly, but you haven't like you know executed it, like uh, opening up like a certain bit, like a skating rink or something? Uh. No, not really. Mm. I mean, I, I do want to open up a skating rink someday. It's not like a dream, but it's like it just financially just doesn't make any sense to. It's just not very profitable. Yeah. And like, I don't live in an area where I can guarantee it's going to take off and be really, really popular. And then even if it was really popular, I wouldn't make much money. So I'd have to get like crazy fuck you money to open up a skating rink. Like, mm. 
for roller skating. It just, I don't think it'd be worthwhile. Oh, can I, can you, you don't have to share this, but what is a fuck you money? Because one time someone told me, told me they're like, Brittany makes fuck you money. I was like, oh, I do. And I was like, no, I don't. Like, no, you, if, don't. you don't make fuck you money. Thank you. What's a fuck you money? Give me a number. Fuck you money is when you can like circumvent the system. So like you can circumvent YouTube. You just don't even care. So um. it's like, some people make so much money. Uh, and you're looking at people like Jay Z or folks like that. That okay, that they're 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 close to a billion dollars. They don't care about the systems in place. They don't care if iTunes ever plays their shit again. Like, is it going to cost them? Sure, but they make so much money, they don't really matter. They're like okay. bigger than the systems. I agree with that. Okay, I agree so with Elon that. Elon Musk would be a good example of like fuck. Yes. Money. Okay, so so Hassan doesn't have fuck you money. No, definitely not. Okay, he's just rich. He's rich. Yeah, rich, Which rich. Is okay, great life, but it's definitely not fuck you money. Fuck you money is crazy. Okay. Okay. That's, I agree. Okay. Cause I felt crazy when people would be like, you make fuck you money. I was like, I'm so confused. I thought fuck you money was like the money, like the rich, 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 rich. I, I think they get it because their definition of fuck you is just like, oh, I could take a vacation when I want, which is definitely not fuck you money. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, because like, you could only say fuck you to like a few circumstances. Fuck you is like when you can say it to governments. You know what I'm saying? Like, Elon is arguing with the federal government. Now, you know, like, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg is arguing with the, <laughs> he goes to Hawaii. They have laws. He says, I don't care. Yeah. I'm buying this land. I'm buying this whole compound. Even if it's your tiny island, fuck you, I'm buying True. it. True. That's what you do. And then True. when people get upset, he donates money to their cause so they can shut the fuck up. That's. Damn. That's fuck you money. Damn. When you say it like that, that's exactly, yeah. Abs I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Man and I honestly, I don't even want fuck you money because that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It is. It's maximum, maximum amount of freedom in a lot of ways, but yeah, yeah. it's a lot of work to get there. Sounds like sure. a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, listen, it's been a fun chat. I'm going to get back to work for a little bit. Sounds great. Good to catch up. Yeah. Um, same. Thank you for calling. No worries. Enjoy yourself. Have a good night. You too. Bye, Abba. In my head, in real life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.